Hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome to the second episode of my Fire Emblem Fates class guide. Last time we covered archers, which are highly agile and speedy class, hardly missing and relying on their pure skill as an expert of their craft, and a class I generally use in every single Fire Emblem game. Today, we're covering a class that is the exact opposite of all the things I just said. Fighters. That's enough back talk. Class dismissed. Fighters are the epitome of brute force. They are axe-wielding raw damage machines. They have high HP and strength with mostly average speed and skill, running across the battlefield with some decent crit rates and have a pretty decent ranged weapon to boot. They are essentially the most pure damage base class in Fire Emblem, and when I say pure damage, I mean damage without having to double attack or crit. And because of the weapon triangle, fighters can dominate a lot of the mounted spearmen in most games early on. Now before we talk about weaknesses, let me state I don't like fighters in general. Ross and Boyd are the only two fighters that haven't disappointed me, so I'm kind of impartial to this. So the first and most prevalent flaw to the fighter is their atrocious hit rate. The Axe's low hit stat mixed with the fighter's mid-range hit chance creates one of the most inaccurate units in the game. For example, an Iron Axe has a 70% hit stat while an Iron Sword has a 90% hit stat. So doing something like trying to fight a decent Myrmidon is downright suicide. This was great! But next time, let's discuss the subtle yet distinct difference between justice and vengeance. It is a great honor to spend quality time with a fellow friend of justice. To follow that, they may have extremely high HP, which allows them to be able to take a lot of damage from any type of attacker. The drawback to this is in their defense and resistance stats. Fighters in general have very low defense, and in a lot of cases they get a 0% growth rate for resistance, which leads to several characters starting out with 1 or 0 resistance and not gaining any more for 20 levels. The high HP allows them to variably take damage, but the drawback is that they don't really reduce any of the damage that's incoming. The fighter's skills are very general use, and I've even seen some people unequip certain skills for different situations. First off, we have the fighter's plus 5 HP appearing in both Awakening and Fates, which increases the user's maximum HP by 5, increasing their already potent high HP potential. Next up, we have Zeal in Fire Emblem Awakening, which increases critical hit by 5, allowing for a boost in crit rate without any drawbacks unlike our next skill, Gamble. Being one of the more appropriately named skills, Gamble is a skill with a trade-off. In the Telia series, Gamble halves the user's accuracy rate upon proccing and doubles their crit rate. While in Awakening and Fates, this skill sacrifices accuracy for plus 10 crit. In Awakening, it's minus 5 hit, and for Fates, it's minus 10. I know some people who wholly prefer playing without this skill, although I personally would keep it on depending on the promotion you go towards. Now let's talk about some of the basic weapons of the trade. Once again, fighters can only use axes or clubs if you're playing a Hoshido, so they are fairly limited. But the choices they have are more than enough. First, let's look at the basic Iron Axe. So, axes and clubs in general have pretty low hit rate. The difference between the two, stat-wise at least, is that while axes do more damage in general, clubs have higher accuracy and on average have a 5% crit modifier. Second, we have the ranged axe of pretty much any Fire Emblem game, the Hand Axe. The Hand Axe has slightly lower damage and a lower hit rate. In Fire Emblem Fates, it cannot double attack, inflict critical hits, and increases enemies' ability to double attack. Now, is the ranged upside of having a range of 1 to 2 worth it? Well, yes and no. It really comes down to who you're fighting. If you're fighting an archer, depending on the level difference, it could be a bad idea. But in general, using it to fight someone who cannot fight back at a range or on a mage who will likely die in one hit is ideal. Next up, we have its big brother, the Tomahawk, which has a range of just 2 instead of 1 to 2, like the Hand Axe. The Tomahawk has a lower hit rate and decreases your avoid. The upsides to this weapon is the extreme damage for a ranged axe and its ability to crit over the Hand Axe. Then there's the Hammer. 
which is pretty accurate for an axe along with a whopping 12 damage. The kicker to this weapon is that it tears through armored units, but is fairly ineffective otherwise. Now let's go over some of the possible promotions for the fighter. There are two possible promotions for the fighter in Fire Emblem Fates, the Berserker and the Hero. The Berserker is a class that, well, quite frankly, does not take shit. They drop their defense entirely so they can up strength and HP. They also gain natural bonus to their critical hit ratings just like snipers and swordmasters do. Much like swordmasters and snipers, the Berserker is basically an amplified fighter in every way. Much like the fighter, they are restricted to axes making it so that the overall tactics have not changed. As for skills in both Awakening and Fates, they receive Axe Fair. This skill gives any unit who equips plus 5 strength when equipping any axe, and plus 5 magic if it's a bolt axe. This skill just buffs the Berserker to be an even more insane damage dealer. In Fates, the Berserker gains a skill called Rally Strength, which increases strength by 4 to all allies within a 3 tile radius in Awakening, and a 2 tile radius in Fates for 1 turn. Now, I'm going to say this about all Rally skills, but Rally skills in Fates are really great. Strength is probably the best among all of them, I can't even tell you how many times I've had Arthur turn Effie into a boss killer with this skill. The second promotion of the Fighter is what you would get if you combine the defense of a general and the speed of a swordmaster, the Hero. The Hero is an interesting class. I've always loved the design of the Hero, but it just never seemed to perform as well as any of the units is composed of. Heroes are sword and shield wielding foot soldiers. In their concept art, they keep their weapon tucked away in their shield much like Roman soldiers did. Most heroes are speedier than generals and armored units, but have average defense, and at the same time they're not nearly as fast as swordmasters, but make up for that with that average defense. In most Fire Emblem games, the hero can use axes as well as swords. Not counting the first four Fire Emblem games, Radiant Dawn is the only game in which heroes cannot use axes. You can also play a hero in a very similar fashion to the fighter. They won't become a destroyer of world unit, but they will still fill a prominent slot on your team. Just make sure you keep them well protected, just as you would a fighter. The most recognizable part about the hero is their skill, Soul. Soul allows the user to heal based on a certain percentage of damage. In Path of Radiance, it's all of the damage the unit has done. In Radiant Dawn, it triples the damage. I haven't played Radiant Dawn yet, but as I'm doing all this research, I'm starting to see a plethora of near-broken skills. For this game to be the most difficult in the series, it would A, either have to have tons of reinforcements, or B, have to have- Seth, this party's freaking fantastic. How could it not be, my friend? I only host the best. I got this great idea, just hear me out, man. Alright, well, you've never failed me before, so why not believe you now? So first, you let me climb up on your shoulders. Uh-huh. And then I'll helicopter my axe around for a while. Go on. Then all you have to do is steal Raijinto and Ragnol from their tents. Yeah, sure, wait, steal from Ryoma? I'm sorry, but I don't want to die. So then, all I have to do is helicopter you around the field, and we'll be a flying unit of death. You know, that doesn't sound too bad. I'm not sure Robin will approve, though. Why don't we ask him? He's right over there, after all. Hey, Robin, can I borrow Ragnall and Raijinto for a little while? Time to tipsy the scales. Ugh. Has anyone seen Kellum anywhere? Oh, it doesn't matter. He's probably out partying somewhere, too. Hey, Luzina! Minus if I Astra your Gale Force? What do you mean, no? So, who cares what Krom thinks? It's not like he's your dad or anything. Uh, should we tell him? No, no, no. Just take it as a yes and start stealing. Damn, I wish I was great at painting so I could make that a mural. Anyways, in Awakening and Fate, Soul restores HP equal to half the amount of damage done to the enemy. Soul is a fantastic skill that in my opinion makes the hero what it is, and I couldn't imagine a single new Fire Emblem game without Soul. The second skill heroes receive is called Axe Breaker, which raises hit rate and evasion by 50 when the enemy is equipped with an axe. This turns your hero into an endgame axeman's worst nightmare. Now you just need to ask the question, which do I promote to? This actually has quite a simple answer compared to some other classes. If you've hit level 20 and you've enjoyed your fighter, then promote to a Berserker. You will absolutely love it. 
If you're like me and you generally loathe the class in the 3DS series, then go for Hero. My favorite fighter at a base level is probably Arthur. Yeah, talk about unpopular opinions compared to Charlotte. And while he doesn't have some of the, uh, well-endowed, well-rounded character traits of Charlotte, he is still a blast to listen to. A lot of people just say that he didn't belong, but since I played Birthright first when I ran into him in Camilla's chapter, I was like, is that Captain America? His clumsiness and love of justice makes Arthur such a fun character. I especially like his support with Baruka. He exchanges his love of justice with a cold-hearted, uncompassionate killer, and it becomes a really interesting support. My favorite Berserker is Ross from Sacred Stones. Honestly, there's nothing about his personality that strikes me as special. He's just really hardworking. But he was one of the few fighters I like, and when he promoted, he was an absolute monster. I did really like his support with Loot. Ross basically keeps trying to impress Loot like any other girl. Problem being, Loot isn't like any other girl. She's very literal and almost pays no mind to his advances. But in my head canon, they're married. My favorite hero is yet another Sacred Stones character, Garrick. Garrick exemplifies everything a hero should be. Other characters recognize his strength and it shows in his supports. Garrick completely detests violence and tries to stop it at any turn, but he also admits that's why he's a mercenary, so he can choose who to fight for and stop conflict. That's going to be it for my Fire Emblem Fates Fighter Guide. After I released the Archer Guide, we were at roughly around 160 subs. That boosted past 200 subscribers in 5 days. I thought I was getting view botted. I thought the Google police were gonna come and kick down my door and take me to court for unusually high views on a usually shitty video. So thank you guys so much for your support. Feel free to leave a like, but only if you like the video, and if you feel like you disliked the video and didn't teach you anything and you just hate me in general, then leave a dislike, I'm fine with that, I'll only cry for three hours this time, I promise. And if you want to see any of my other content, click here to see my Fire Emblem Fates Archer Guide, click here to see my Path of Radiance playthrough, or if you're into something different, click here to check out my Witcher 3 playthrough. Thank you for watching, it means a lot, have a wonderful day, right and out.